हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर चैनल सिंपलीफाइड कंप्यूटर साइंस कॉन्सेप्ट्स बाय प्रोफेसर ऋतुजा टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग इंटीग्रिटी कंस्ट्रेंट्स इन डेटाबेस मैनेजमेंट सिस्टम सो लेट अस बिगिन विद द टॉपिक नाउ एज द नेम सजेस्ट इंटीग्रिटी कंस्ट्रेंट्स व्हाट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाय इंटीग्रिटी कंस्ट्रेंट्स कंस्ट्रेंट्स आर नथिंग बट लिमिटेशंस और सम रूल्स नाउ व्हाट आर बेसिकली दिस इंटीग्रिटी कंस्ट्रेंट्स these are nothing but a set of rules which is used to maintain the quality of the information now there are various operations that are done on the database that is uh, operations like insertion deletion updation and many more so these integrity constraints ensures that the insertion updation and all these operations that are to be performed they should be performed in such a way that the data integrity is not affected what do you understand by integrity integrity means see database is a uh, data base can be accessed by many users at the same time so if a particular user is making change to a particular uh, data it should be reflected all over the uh, database so that it can be accessed by all the users and the same value of the data can be accessed otherwise integrity issues can be raised so thus these integrity constraints are used to guard against accidental damage to the database now why we are saying this you will get you will be understanding in a bit why let's say accidental damage why we are saying this because let's say you want to um, edit a particular field wherein that particular field accepts only the integer type and if you are trying to fill that particular field with the character it should directly pop up a message saying that the field accepts only integer you are trying to enter character so here we are trying to safeguard our database by the damage that can be caused so these are certain integrity constraints that we can apply on the database similarly integrity constraints provides a way of ensuring that changes made to the database by the authorized users do not result in a loss of data consistency now let us see various types of integrity constraints the types are integrity const entity constraint referential integrity constraint check integrity constraint domain in integrity constraint default constraints and key constraints now let us see this one by one let us first look at domain constraint now what do you understand by domain constraint first of all just look at this table that is created named employee which has four fields or four attributes employee id address name and age look at these fields employee id and address both are var cap why var cap because then the data that can be contained in this field can be alphanumeric that is it uh, alphabets are also and the numbers can also be fit into it so if you see the employee id is a1 that means it has a uh, character also and uh, numbers also so that is why its data type is or we can say the domain is var cap similarly the domain for name is character and the nom domain for age is integer that means name will only accept characters age will accept only integers now look at the at this particular field that is in age if uh, for the employee id r4 if we are trying to enter there as a it it should ideally not accept because we have already declared the domain of age is integer and a is a character so it should not allow so whenever we are trying to enter some other uh, domain uh, then it should not be allowed so here when a is trying uh, when we are trying to enter a it is not allowed as the domain of the age field is integer and a is character so these are the domain constraints so let us now read this domain constraints can be defined as the definition of valid set of values or the domains for an attribute so for each column every time if the domain is declared then 
only that particular domain's value can be entered into that column. So the value of the attribute must be available in the corresponding domain. I hope you have understood this domain constraint. Now let us go to the next one that is entity integrity constraints. Now just look at these two tables. This is employee ID uh, or we can say this is an employee table. Uh, both are employee tables. But look, observe the first table now. The employee table uh, has primary key employee ID. Okay. Now here just look at the employee ID column. The fourth tuple or the fourth row does not have primary key into it. So these are not allowed because primary key is used to identify a unique record and it should never be null. It cannot be null. So blank spaces are not allowed in the primary key. So that is entity integrity constraint. Also, just observe the second table. Now here, observe the second row. Now, the second row and observe the employee ID, that is the primary key value for the second row, which is null. That is written as null. So, this is also not allowed. Null values are not allowed. So, this is about entity integrity constraints. So, uh, we have to observe here the primary key which is used to identify the individual records in the relation and if the, end of the primary key has a null value then we cannot identify those rows and it should also not have the null value. Then let us go to the check constraints. Again, now what is what do you understand by check constraint? Just observe this table. This is employee table. Now, we have given a condition or we have given a validation check over here that age field should always have values greater than 18. Just observe this column then. For a first employee that is A1 it is 21, P2 it is 18, X3 it is 24. That means for all the three rows it is satisfying the condition of age is greater than 18. But now observe employee ID R4. The age field for R4 is 16. And what is a condition? Check, condi check condition that is age should be greater than 18. However, here the age is 16. That means this entry should not be allowed because the check constraint says that we have the field age which accepts only the values which are greater than 18. So, whenever the user is trying to enter anything less than 18, is not allowed. So this is check constraints. Then let us go to the referential integrity constraints. Now whenever a word comes referential, we have to keep in mind that there is a concept of foreign key into it. Now look at this table. This is the employee table. We can call it as table 1. And the next table is a table 2. We can call it as a location table. Now Location table has a primary key name as department ID and employee table will have a primary key as employee ID. But now when I have to show relationship between employee table and the location table, I have to use a foreign key concept. So how to show a relationship for that? So the primary key of the second table is used as a foreign key in the first table. So if you observe department ID is the primary key of this table, it is used as a foreign key in the first table, that is department ID. But now if you just observe, what are the contents of department ID uh, as a primary key, it is 1, 2, 3. So it is, it is obvious that only 1, 2, 3 must be present in the first table. So if you observe the fourth row that is R4 ka department ID is 5. Is it is 5 there in the location table? No, we have only 1, 2, 3. So how 5 is 5 can be allowed? It is not allowed because the department ID 5 is not defined as a primary key in the table 2. Right? So and in table 1, department ID is a foreign key. So whatever values are there in the primary key of second table, 
those values should reflect over here. So I hope you have understood this referential integrity constraints. Obviously the table 1 is called as a related table or referencing table and table 2 is called as a primary table or a referenced table. Let us move to the next one that is default constraints. Now here just again observe this particular table. Default means what? If any value is not there then by default you have to put some value. Right? So similar concepts applies in DBMS. So let us say I have this table but then I have not entered anything into this e salary ka column. So if I am not entering entering anything into it, by default it will put the values at 8500. That condition I have applied. Let's say I am not entering anything into e department because I don't know anything and I have just kept it as blank. So we cannot keep anything as blank. So by default values is analytics. So wherever it is bank, blank, it just Uh, it just uh, uses this analytics and covers it covers it up. So if whatever uh, is not present, we cannot keep it as blank. To accomplish that, we will put those default values which are set by the user or maybe database administrator. Then comes the unique constraints. Now what are these unique constraints? So just look at observe this particular table again. Now, unique constraints, let us say the email ID is a unique constraint or a unique uh, 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 attribute we have considered. Now, unique and primary are different. Primary will uniquely identify a record, but unique means that no duplicate values in a column are allowed. So, if I am trying to enter these two values, that is 200 uh, and 209, both are having Smith as a name. But obviously when I am using it as a primary key, two, two, 2000 and 2009 are different different values so it will be accepting. But then if I am using unique constraint which means that same value should not come in the same column. But here Smith is repeating two times as well as J Smith which is email it is also repeating two times. So if I am trying to enter 2000 Smith J Smith. First it will check whether Smith is there in uh, earlier in the last name. No, it is not there. Whether J Smith is there in the email. No, it is not there. So this first will be allowed to enter into the database. But the second entry is 2209 Smith and J Smith. So we will again check 2009, 209. Yes, it is a primary key. It is allowed. But Smith, Smith is already there in the table. J Smith, it is already there in the table. So this entry will not be allowed. So these are the unique constraints. Then comes the last one that is the key constraints. Now as we have already seen in the primary keys, uh, primary keys should not have repetitive values because they should uniquely identify a record. So here if you see employee ID is a primary key and the second row and the fourth row are having the same values. So here they will not uniquely identify a record and this is not allowed. So the primary key should not be null and it should be unique. So these are the key constraints and obviously we have multiple keys uh, such as uh, candidate keys but out of which one key will always be the primary key. So I hope uh, you have understood the integrity constraints. And at the end of this lecture, we have studied the different types of integrity constraints and thank you for watching the video. Please do like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you have any doubts, please do post in the comment box. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day ahead.